Hello, my name is Peyton Washington from Tapestry Holly, and today I'm going to be showing you a little game we've been making for the past month uh, for Juneteenth. So the first thing about this um, game is what it actually takes to make one. Uh, so you might just think, oh, let's just jump into it and see how it works out. Uh, but a lot of the times it, that results in a lot of plot holes as well as just not a lot of structure to the game. Uh, so today I'm going to be taking you through my thought process and um, overall design of my game as well as the ending result and how I finish it as well as the code for it. So the sections that we're going to be going through is genre and theme, plot and goal, structure and placement, code and macros, and design. After that we'll go through a playthrough for the game. So. First thing is genre and theme. So for my genre, I picked sort of a thriller and mystery sort of um, genre. And this can vary on what you want for your game and what you experience. Personally, for me, uh, I'm very interested in horror films and novels, uh, as well as just criminal TV, TV shows. Uh, so that's kind of why I chose this theme for my game because I already had a little bit of knowledge in it. The next thing is plot and goal. So when you're starting off with your game, uh, you want to make sure you have a solid plot um, as well as a solid goal for the participant to reach um, at the end of the game. Um, so you kind of have something to strive for. The next thing is structure and placement. Um, Structure and placement is sort of, it depends on what kind of game you want to do. Um, for a mystery game, you might, might want to do more uh, story, uh, more of a storyline rather than just like uh, fighting or like HP levels within your game. But if you want to go for more of an action um, sort of theme for your game, you might want to do more um, of those fighting structured scenes um, within your story. The next one is code and macros. So that's when we're gonna be actually diving deep into uh, what I specifically did to code for my game, um, as well as uh, what it took to really find the right images or find the right text or find the right um, talking style or text style um, for my game specifically. Uh, the last one is design. Um, and that's really just basically the fonts, uh, as well as the uh, way you place each picture in your game, um, and the tech, the writing styles. So whether it's going to be bubbly or uh, very chilling and very uh, descriptive is really all up to design. And it's up to you. Uh, so let's go. First thing is genre. And theme, basically what I did for my genre theme, I already kind of talked about this, was a thriller. Um, and as you can see here, it kind of resembles that uh, sort of feeling. Um, and it kind of resembles that theme um, because kind of the font, and this kind of comes into with design as well, uh, the font really brings out that thriller vibe as well as the Victorian styled images I placed inside of my game. My uh, plot basically is what well, I'm going back to. The plot for my game is basically you're a girl who, or rather a woman who wakes up uh, in this very Victorian creepy house. You have no idea where you're at, uh, except for when you look out the windows, you can see a dense forest uh, and the sun shining through the, uh, the cracks in the leaves. Um, and as you go through this house, kind of in a panic, sort of in a, in a adrenaline rush, you start to find out more and more about why you're actually there. And eventually you get to an end point uh, 
where you find out truly what happened to you and why you were there in the first place. Uh, so that was my overall description of what my game is actually about. Um, it goes into more detail as you actually play the game. Um, and that kind of sums up plot and goal. The next one is structure and placement. So for me, what I did, I didn't really want to have sort of that action. Um, so for structure and placement, I personally, since my game is a thriller or a mystery game, I wanted it to have more storyline and more text for the participant to read rather than just um, fighting scenes uh, and HP levels and stuff like that. And so what I did was I would, I created this entire web um, just of paths that I wanted the player to go down and each path leads, leads to something else uh, that is essential for uh, the knowledge of the player or it would just be it would just be another room for the player to collect an item um, and you really want to make sure that each text or each um, path that one of your other paths lead to um, has some sort of flesh to the story and flesh to the plot um, and that kind of really what makes or breaks a game um, is whether some area has um, enough flesh for the player to like actually be interested and involved in the game. Of course, there can be some filler uh, passages and storyline or some filler passages just to like lighten up the mood or to just uh, use as a as a substitute for something. Uh, but personally, I didn't do that as much as uh, most people do because I wanted this story to have a lot of uh, emphasis on the player. Uh, so code and macros. So this is all the code that I did for my game. It's in Twinery. Um, so each of these passages has um, some sort of code in it, uh, whether it's just variables or it's text, or it's leading to another passage, or if it's the death pass passage, passage. <laughs> or whether it's the death passage, uh, which leads back to the back to the beginning of the game. So, with that, let's start at the beginning. So, when you're starting off your game, uh, you want to make sure you have variables, uh, and this is basically the inventory. Um, throughout your game. Uh, so you, you can see it says set, um, let's go to the second one. It says set necklace to zero. And that basically is telling the system that uh, that specific variable is at zero, therefore you don't have it in your inventory yet. But when you go to the passage that has that variable in it, for example, let's see if it's in this one, yep. Um, it says set necklace to one and therefore now you have a necklace in your inventory um, And that's because you set it at the beginning of the game if you had just put uh, set necklace to one in One of these passages and didn't set the variable to zero in the beginning It wouldn't work out actually and you wouldn't have gotten um, That variable or you wouldn't have gotten that item in the first place and it would show up as an error in your game. Um, what also is in here is display, oh, what also is in here is display chapter one. Uh, this actually is not necessary, but there was some other extra code that I needed to go through, um, and that's more complex. And it, it's not really a huge factor within the game. Uh, and, Let's move on to the actual text. So this is the first thing you see when you enter my game. Um, it is this home screen, or it's this little area uh, where it has the text, it has links, 
it has an image and it has a title. So from here, you can see that. Hello. Hello? All right. Anyway, <laughs> okay. So here is the text for, or the, here's the code for the first passage. Um, and right here is the image that you see here. Um, and basically the code for that is image or IMG and then SRC, and that's source. And when you put equals to, and then the quotation mark, um, and the link to the actual image or the IP, the address to the ac actual image, it can show up as um, here. And this is just a photo off of Google. It's nothing that I uh, personally took or anything like that. And it's just a really simple concept uh, to be able to deal with. Uh, this part right here is the actual set or what I actually set for the um, size of the image. Um, and that is width to be 700 pixels and the height to be 400 pixels. Um, and that's because the image was originally too large for this and it would be about that big rather than this smaller image. Next would just be the text. Um, there's nothing to it. It's just um, writing and flesh of the story. Um, after that is the links. So this is um, sort of what brings your passages together uh, because each of these links make another passage and it leads to another passage. So for example, um, it would have rush to the front door and that's in the little brackets. Um, this text in front is front door but it uh, points an error out to the text or the passage's actual name. Um, as you can see, here's the name up here, uh, and this points to the actual name. So if we see chapter one front door and we look below it somewhere, you can see chapter one front door right here, and you can see the connection between the two. Um, and that's true for literally all the other passages um, and kind of what makes or breaks your um, entire story is whether if all of them line up. So that kind of comes into play when I made uh, this, these pa passages over here. Now, these ones are actually tunnels. Um, and this tunnel system is actually pretty complex. It doesn't look anything like, it doesn't look anything like this in actual, in actuality. Like if you were to go from T1 to T, to the T3 to T4, it doesn't actually align like that um, on paper or on a blueprint, I should say. Um, and I actually have the blueprints right here. So you can kind of see my thought process for it. Um, so I wanted to kind of create a tunnel system uh, just for, just to give some uh, mystery to the game and kind of an unfamiliarity of where you're actually going inside of this house that I'm making, or inside of this um, environment that I'm making. Um, and that kind of attributes to the theme and genre of my game. So uh, from that, there's not much to it, uh, except for in, this, in these patch passages, after you make a certain amount of churns within the tunnels, you can't go any farther because the monster in my game, the antagonist in my game, catches you. So, saying that, we have some new code here. This is the if and else if and else's statement. These basically mean if you have a certain amount of variables, then show this text or if you don't have a certain amount of variables, show this text. And that leads to different uh, scenarios and different passages that you can go down. Uh, in this instance, 
if you churned, if you actually had um, churned more than three times, you would have been killed by the monster uh, in my game. And that resulted in death. And you can see all of these tunnels lead back to it because um, if you turned amount, a certain amount of times in these tunnels, it would eventually switch over to that text from earlier um, and would lead you over here. Now, if we go back into it, uh, you can see what you might be wondering, what's the difference between else if statements and if statements? Uh, well, the if statements are always going to come first. They're kind of like the setter for uh, the rest of the else statements. Um, the next one would be else if, and that's just if the first if, oh, that's not a very good description. <laughs> and that's just in case the first if uh, statement does not align with like the variables that you have accumulated. Um, and that's why the else is in front of it. The next one would be just else, and that's just if none of the other ones had um, been applied, basically. Um, so for the code, that's mostly all I used uh, for, uh, oh, there's also a few more actually. Uh, it is the, the audio, the audio code. So for this, it's just, it's basically the same thing as um, the image, the image code, but instead of saying image source, it's audio source. And afterwards you put autoplay to make it, to make sure it goes immediately um, after you click on the passages link. So that is all for the code, I think. Yep. Um, now for the, the la this is one of the last, pa last passages. Um, and here is kind of where uh, it takes you back to the beginning. It restarts you. And so by doing this, it, or we see a new piece of code here. And this is when you click the restart button. Um, it reloads all of your variables. So you don't have those remaining variables that you did before. So if you were to go into the back into the tunnels, it wouldn't immediately put you in that death scene. Um, and this is kind of essential for uh, having an end, like an end credit or end scene uh, or a restart scene uh, to make sure that all of your variables aren't there anymore and that the player can actually reset the game without having um, any complications. So that is it for the code, except for this part. Um, and this is just for the title of the game. Um, as you can see, it's like the center, or the center is it, uh, so it's in the middle of your screen. Uh, this right here is how big the font is gonna be. Uh, right here is a text style, uh, and that's just the font. Um, and then text color is the text is color, which I chose red and the actual font like design. Um, and I chose Tritello, Tritello. <laughs> um, and then the, what the tile actually says, which would be homebody. So, uh, this is my code for the game. As you can see, it's pretty big and it is about 10 minutes to play. Um, so let's just hop into the game. So I'm going to do all three options for uh, the, or all three endings of my game. Uh, and we can kind of test out uh, the mechanics of it. Uh, there are some errors in this, so we can kind of nitpick uh, why those errors happened. So I'll start. Homebody. You awake in an unfamiliar place, the sun shining through the windows and a fresh scent of mothballs and old people fill your nose. As you lift your head from the creaky wooden floors, you soon begin to realize you have absolutely no idea where you are. 
You start to panic and look around for any indication of familiarity. So you go to the front door. The image is up. You sprint to the door and try the knob, but notice a slippery sensation. Weird. The brass knob is covered in some sort of lighter fluid. Interesting. Looking up, you appreciate the wood the door is made from. Cherry wood, intricate, beautiful. And then you can go back from that passages. Uh, pry the windows. And that's where the audio comes in from the code as well. Uh, because of the autoplay function, uh, you're allow it allows it to play immediately after you click the passage. As you try to pry the nearby windows, you notice a small protruded piece of wood. Too bad your mind works faster than your body. You prick your finger, getting a nasty splinter. Even though you have this injury, the windows ultimately will not budge. In fact, you notice they are nailed down. Then you look outside. The sun barely reaches the windows through the thick, dense jungle. The hallway. As you sprint down the hallway, a ruffle in your carpet the, a ruffle in the carpet trips you and you land smack on your face. This is kind of where design comes in as well because it kind of emphasizes what just happened to you uh, as well as combined with the audio um, in the passage. Uh, and you kind of can see with the design as well, it kind of keeps this red, dark, um, and spooky kind of vibe to it. Um, and that's also a huge factor in a game um, to kind of set the mood for the participant and make sure that everything kind of flows with your theme and genre. Uh, and that's kind of what I decided to do. A light trickle of blood runs from your nose. It wasn't even worth it in the end because the hallway was a dead end. Where were you going with a dead end hallway? Anyway, you turn back around and see what, then see that there are two doors, one on your left and the other on your right. Which do you take? And you can take left or right. Uh, for, this, for the purpose of this game, I'm gonna take right so we have all of the um, variables or items in our inventory for the other two endings. So you walk into, a, into the door on the right and see a small, ratchet, messy bedroom. There are clothes viewed all over the floor and everything is covered in dust. For some reason, you feel at home with an organized room like you've been there before. Explore the room, inspect the bed. You go over to the bed and lift up the covers. They are grimy quilt material, almost too old to stay together. As the covers get tossed to the side, you find a little hip of plushy. Cute. This is one of the instances where the variables are actually picked up. So if we go back over here, in this, you can see the plushy variable is set to zero. And right in the passage uh, that we are right now, the plushy would be set to one. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of this, so I'm just gonna click through it a little bit so we can get to a point um, where it kind of is a defining path uh, for which ending you wanna do. Okay, right now we have hit a defining factor in my game. Uh, you have two options, either to hide or go upstairs. Um, and this is where it really comes in for plot, or this is where plot really comes in uh, and making sure you don't have any holes in your game for it. So if you chose the hide option, uh, you would have these three options. Um, and that would be ignore it, talk back, or run. These all have you end up in different situations. I'm not gonna go through all of it because uh, it kind of takes a while. So I'm just gonna show you in this, in the code. So what happens is the, on the stairs, if you tried to go back up, which was in the last passage, um, it would just take you right back down uh, to hide. For, but, from the options of either ignore it, talk back, or run, 
you could try to ignore it, which would result in this terrifying <laughs> image um, and result in these all options. These, I'm gonna re redact my statement from earlier. These are the three <laughs> defining uh, moments in my game. You can either hide, um, and that would just result in no information at all. You could talk, which results in you gaining companions, or you could fight. So if you were to hide, you go in the corner of the room, and then you would have an option to ignore it, um, and that would be this. It would just take you right back to having to talk to it, though, or to hide or to fight. If you fought, you would have the option to stay still, run, and then go into the tunnels. Uh, but the tunnels offer you no more information, so fighting would ultimately be not the best option for you. Um, and that would result in just fear within the participant. Um, eventually, you'd find information at the end of the tunnels, tunnels, but that's only if you survive. If you were to talk, that would get you finding new people and kind of understanding who they are and who you are. Um, and that's kind of uh, the gist of, of the second ending. Um, I'll go into more depth after I discuss the third ending. The third one would just be to hide. Uh, and hiding really doesn't do anything. It just results to you having to either talk or fight again. Um, but if you do hide, there is a, uh, there is a passage where you hide too long and then you just get jumped. <laughs> Um, so for the fighting option, you go through the tunnels, uh, and as you go through them, the monster is chasing the entire time, and then we get to these three options. Um, and I'll just, I'll play through the game real quick so we can get to those options and I can show you, uh, kind of the difference between the two. So now we are at a point uh, where you kind of find more information about the person inside the game um, and who you're playing. Uh, and this is just, this is the talking option, or this is a talking ending where you talked to the people that were chasing you um, and had a conversation with them and kind of got a gist of where you were and what you're doing there. Um, and I'll just give you a rundown. Uh, you met a little girl she really adores a plush a hippo plushie that you collected in the bedroom um and that's kind of her character just very bubbly um but very clingy as well uh the second character is a wolf humanoid humanoid figure um and this man is very protective of the little girl uh but also is very stingy and cranky as well as strict and very uh, mean in general, kind of a stereotypical werewolf. Um, and so right now they take you down this hallway um, where you can either, sorry, where you can either go to bathroom, closet, kitchen, and they all lead to more information about who you are. And this kind of explains more about my story um, and kind of sets the mood for a third or the next part of my game um and that's kind of where uh we leave off at is this this passage because i couldn't finish the entire game so i have to end it off as a demo um and it kind of gives the player a cliffhanger it kind of gives a participant uh wanting more and that's kind of if you can't finish the game um all in one, all in a frame of time. Uh, this is kind of the best option for keeping your player intrigued. Um, and so if we clicked and, it would end the, that passage led to the end passage 
um, for my game, which was the last, which kind of like the end card. Um, and this just says thank you and um, my experience with it. And it shows an image in Homebody. And you can't go back to the beginning from this, uh, even though I should put some code in there. So, oopsies. That is all uh, for my game. That was kind of my, my thought process and uh, my execution of my game. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, again, my name is Peyton Washington, uh, and have a good day. Thank you.